Roswell, New Mexico is absolutely full of surprises. I'm sure you've heard by now about its association with aliens, UFOs, and the annual UFO festival. But did you know that it is also a haven for artists? It's the home of the prestigious New Mexico Military Institute, and it has several wildlife sanctuaries. I had no idea there was such a variety of things to do here, and in this week's video, I'm going to give you a grand tour of all there is to do in the town of Roswell, New Mexico, and we'll even meet a few locals. So if you're planning a trip through the area, I highly recommend you spend some time here. We're going to start our tour here in Roswell at the Visitor Center. This is on the corner of 5th and Main, and they are closed on Sundays and Mondays. So if you're new to Roswell, inside the Visitor Center, they'll give you a great map of the city where all the main attractions are located. They have items you can purchase for gift shop. You can get your whole family in a picture with the aliens inside there. So it's a good place to stop when you first arrive into town. Adjacent to the Visitor Center is Pioneer Plaza. Here you can find a statue of John Chisholm, a wealthy and influential rancher in the area who's considered the second most notable figure of the Lincoln County Wars next to Billy the Kid. This was sculpted by Robert Summers of Texas. And across the street is the beautiful Chavez County Courthouse that was built in 1911. This gorgeous building is one of the best surviving examples of the monumental civic style architecture. It's in the National Register of Historic Places. Now on the other side of the courthouse, is another sculpture. This one's of Pat Garrett, and it's also made by the same sculptor, Robert Summers of Texas. Now, Pat Garrett is known for being the guy who killed Billy the Kid. More on the history of this area a little later in the video. Now, I covered the alien attraction and the Roswell incident in last week's video. If you stick around to the end, I'll give you a quick tour of those as well, in case you missed it. Our next stop is the Roswell Museum. It's right next door to the Convention Center. It's open daily from 10 to 6. The Roswell Museum and Art Center inspires discovery, creativity, and cultural understanding of the art and history of the American Southwest. It first opened in 1937, and it has grown over the years to over 50,000 square feet with 12 galleries dedicated to the exhibition of art and history and it includes a planetarium. When we visited, it was undergoing renovation, so it was free, but the standard entry ticket is $10. We started by walking through the Robert Goddard displays that included a recreation of his workshop in this area. Robert Goddard is considered the father of modern rocketry. He was an engineer and a physicist. He created and built the world's first liquid-fueled rocket that was launched in 1926. He was born in Massachusetts, but in 1930, him and his family moved to Roswell, New Mexico for the wide open spaces that was an ideal location for his rocket experiments and privacy for his research. He has quite a list of accomplishments and you can find out a lot of information about him here at this museum. This museum has an impressive historical collection. It starts out with the timeline of events. It takes you from the Hohokam and the Anasazi all the way through the present day. On permanent display is the Rogers and Mary Ellen Aston collection of the American West. It contains close to 2,000 objects that document the history of the region. It spans through the Spanish conquest, Native American life, and westward expansion. You can see weapons and armor, ranching and farming tools, Native American clothing and items, trapping and mountain man equipment. There is so much to see here. But wait, there's more. There's also a large public collection of Peter Hurd and Henriette Wise paintings. Peter Hurd is a well-known painter who was known for his portraits and Western landscapes. He lived here in Roswell. Now, several more of the art galleries were closed here during renovations, but this museum just goes on and on. Very impressive. We are now at Bitter Lake National Wildlife Refuge. This is just seven miles outside of Roswell. It's a great place to come for some quiet and to look for some wildlife. We're gonna take the six mile loop 
around. It looks like the visitor center is closed right now. It's right about sunset, so hopefully we'll see some wildlife. Bitter Lake National Wildlife Refuge is over 24,000 acres, and this is one of the most biologically significant areas for the Pecos watershed. So come along on the drive with us, let's see what we find. Next on all the places you should see in Roswell, this is the miniature museum and collections. It's gotten really good reviews from several people, including the locals that live here in this area. So we're gonna check it out and see what it's all about. Well, this is the Miniatures and Curious Collections Museum. We've been open for five years. Um, we have uh, many sections to the museum uh, in back in the what is that, the northeast corner? We have a room just for kids to come and play. There is a beautiful dollhouse against the wall that came from Kansas City. We have people out there finding things for us all the oh, time. Nice. Um, we have three shopping areas which help make money for the museum, a gift shop, a bazaar of secondhand things, and some local regional stuff. Um, our miniatures start here. They go all the way back and around. There's a button that makes the carousel go round that was done by Lanny cool. and Jack Dunham. We have Santa's workshop done by Joe and Anita Head. These are all miniature makers who were active in Roswell in the 80s and 90s. They have a society called the Los Pocos Locos Miniature Society. Rex and Laverne Smith. There's quite a few. Julie Hinkle. You'll recognize names if you've been around Roswell for a while. Yeah. And we have representation of their miniatures. Um, and then as you come up to this side, we have our Curious Collections. Um, it's rotating about every four to five months. We rotate interesting shows. Right now we have one from a lady who also has an, her own museum in Las Vegas, Nevada called the Office of Collecting and Design. Oh, cool. She came for four days and um, curated some of our furniture and objects to turn it into a beautiful parlor in which you can open the specimen cabinet drawers. Ooh. We have uh, creature characters that were done by an artist in Santa Fe, Janet Ripa, and also a player piano, ducks, and a glitter wall. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Is it... Is it free? Yes, we are free. Wow. We do have a donation box, and at the moment, um, if you donate, you can actually get a little greeting card with a little bird on it that was awesome. that was handmade. Uh, we are getting ready to do a fundraiser because we one of our miniaturists has bought the next door, oh. and we want to turn that into permanent workshop space for the community, permanent Oops, miniature sorry. maker space more exhibit space because we have that many miniatures that right. need to go out wow. and more storage for awesome. all of our wonderful collections. We collect 200, um, more than 200 things in 25 themes. So if anybody has collections or donations, we are always on the lookout for really wow. wonderful things. So thank enjoy. you so much. Yeah, it's fantastic. Welcome. And what's your name? And Nancy Fleming. Nancy, thank you so much for telling us what it's all about. You're welcome. It's like crazy.
the Museum of Miniatures and Curious Collections is free to visit. It far exceeded my expectations. It is closed on Sundays and Mondays. So take that into consideration when you come and visit here in Roswell. This museum is located on 3rd and Richardson, just a block behind the main drag, very close to the UFO Museum. And there's another resale store right here next to it. If you like thrift store and unique finds, this is another great place to check out. Right now we're going to go to the bird sanctuary right here in town. It's a nature center and a path for birds and I'm going to take you along with us. Now the weather is just about turning for the worst here. We've got some crazy wind and it's going to start raining so we're going to make it a quick trip but I'm going to show you what's here and it would be great any time of year. There's picnic tables, chairs and a nice water area. Next up, we're stopping at the very highly regarded Anderson Museum of Contemporary Art. This is Kate, a volunteer at the museum, and she told us about the prestigious Artist in Residence program. This program was started in 1967 to provide gifted, studio-based visual artists a supportive and focused environment to work on their art for an entire year with a free monthly stipend and no strings attached. This is an amazing program and it is awarded to only six artists every year. They have the opportunity in this program for a solo exhibition of their work at the Roswell Museum, and they can have their art purchased for the permanent collection here at this museum. For more information on the program, check the description box below on this video. Next up, we're visiting the Historical Society of Southeastern New Mexico. This was on my list because I absolutely love visiting historical homes. This home was built in 1912 and was the home of the wealthy businessman and rancher, Mr. James Phelps White. To tour the property, you need to request a tour at least 24 hours in advance. You can call or email historydirector at outlook.com and they'll arrange a private tour with one of their awesome volunteers. There's also an archive building next door with quite a collection for anyone who wants to conduct research. We toured the home with the lovely Jane Nunez Anglin. Tours typically start outside. They show you the outbuildings and the grounds around the property before heading inside, but the day we were there, it was crazy windy, so we stayed inside. You'll get a thorough tour of all the rooms in the home. They'll point out special architectural features that were unique to the time. Most of the furnishings in the home are original. After learning about what it was like living in a home such as this in the early 1900s, they review a very thorough timeline and history of events in southeastern New Mexico. This is a photograph of John Chisholm, and his name is C-H-I-S-U-M. He was part of the Goodnight Loving Cattle Drive. He is known as the Cattle King of the Pecos. That is his bus right there. Like I said, his ranch is southeast of town here. It was his ranch. He had over 100,000 head of cattle. I can't even wow. come from ranching families, married into a ranching family. Can't even imagine that many cattle. Wow. But he grazed cattle from near Albuquerque, Bosque, to near Carlsbad. Wow. Tours are free, but donations are encouraged. Here's a few interesting tidbits that we learned on our tour, and I'll save the rest for you when you visit. The construction was begun on this home in 1910. It was completed in 1912. 1912 is also the year that our courthouse was finished. Mm -hmm. It's also the year that New Mexico became a state. And it is also the year that the Titanic sank. Oh, wow. A so lot happened that year. It's a big year. year. Yes. yes. Uh, there is a movie called Chisholm. 
starring John Wayne. Yes. It's fairly accurately accurate. All right. <laughs> uh, the one of the big flaws is that they have Chis Chisholm's Ranch at Lincoln, that he lived at Lincoln. Mm. Not so. Yeah. Okay. And here's a photograph of Volcano Foods. We are the second largest mozzarella cheese factory in the world. I think I saw that off in the distance. Mozzarella cheese? Yes. And the people think it's Italy. <laughs> Most, what? I would say 99.9% .9 of the mozzarella cheese that you eat comes from a Loprino uh, cheese factory. Huh. Yeah. Okay, Look this was that. written by Elizabeth Garrett. This was one of Pat Gar Sheriff Pat Garrett's many children. Oh, okay. She was blind. Home. Her home was just down, down the, the street road. a ways. Uh, but she was an excellent musician. She could write music. She could play music, et cetera, et cetera, even though she was blind. The New Mexico Military Institute here in Roswell is the only state-supported military college in the western United States. It has many notable alumni, such as Sam Donaldson, Conrad Hilton, which is the founder of Hilton Hotels, and Owen Wilson. That was surprising. It was founded in 1891 by Colonel Robert Goss and Captain Joseph Lee, and it was forced to close its doors in 1895 due to lack of funding, but it reopened in 1898 when James J. Hagerman donated 40 acres of land. The buildings are made in a uniform Gothic Revival style of architecture, and the campus is designated on the National Register of Historic Places. I know they do have a museum somewhere on campus, and we were not able to visit during this trip. So if you're interested in military history, this is going to be somewhere you're going to want to check out. We also visited the McBride Veterans Cemetery to pay our respects. Bricktown is a fun attraction for kids and kids at heart who love Legos. It's located on the corner of 2nd and Main. This walkthrough attraction is made of over half a million Lego bricks. There's different themed interactive displays, a toy store, a brick lab for those who want to build, and a scavenger hunt. It's $12 for adults, $11 for military and seniors, and $7 for kids 3 through 12. Now this same location has Spaceport Roswell, which is a virtual reality experience. This location is also the meeting place for a two hour guided UFO tour, where you can visit historical sites around town related to the 1947 Roswell incident. Just note that the tour does not visit the alleged crash sites. And while we're on the subject, there's several alien attractions all located in this area to include the renowned International UFO Museum and Research Center. This is the best place to visit for historical information. There's a place called UFO Spacewalk. This is a fun black light walkthrough adventure and a fun alien zone where you can get some silly alien selfies. If you'd like more detail on these and other fun UFO spots around town, I'll link to that video right here. This morning, we're coming out to the Roswell Airport. Yes, Roswell has an airport, and this is the site of the old Walker Air Force Base. Um, there's a whole airfield here. This is where in the alien scenarios after the alien crash, the craft and the bodies came over here to this Air Force Base. So now we're gonna go and see some of the military history in this area. There is a aviation museum inside the airport, the Walker Air Museum, I believe it's called. We're gonna go take a quick look at what it has to offer. Oh, well, the museum is unfortunately closed and has a little history. Let's see if I can sneak a peek. There's some information about the history of the Walker Aviation Museum. Here's some more information. Now the website said that it was open from 8 to 10 and 
it's not open and I guess it's run by volunteers so I don't know if there's a phone number you may want to call or maybe if there's a number for the airport it's really small if you could get someone to answer the phone you could find out if it was open or not before you came out here oh there we go it says it's only ran by two volunteers and so they only open two and a half hours prior to the mid day flight. They're really expecting the only people to go in the museum are people that are actually here at the airport. So they don't have enough staff to keep it open all the time. That's unfortunate. But there's another really cool thing to see here at the airport. <laughs> Everywhere you look, you're going to have incredible photographic woohoo come and sit in the queen's chair and get beamed up to <laughs> that's hilarious oh my gosh photo opportunities abound here in roswell that's all i got that's all i got to work with here All right, so they told us that the flights here at Roswell Airport usually come in around 11.30. So sometime midday lunch hour is probably when they're gonna be open if you're interested in visiting. I'm so lucky to have stayed with the mother of a dear friend of mine. She is a lifelong resident here in Roswell and we've stayed with her and we've learned from her experience. We've learned of all the great things to do here in this town. So we're gonna talk to her a few minutes about what she knows of Roswell, some of her experiences here. Her name is Rudell Russell Quinn, and I just thank her so much for hosting us on this day. All right, hello, Rudell. How are you today? Fine, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much Lisa. for having me here. Thanks uh, so much. So, I know that you know that I was born in Roswell, New Mexico, yes. a long time ago, March 8th, 1935, Amazing. at St. Mary's Hospital. Excellent. And I was associated with that hospital because the, the nurses were so good to children. Oh, that's excellent. And so I hated to see that go by the wayside when we have new hospitals built. Yeah. Uh, things were quite different when I was growing up. As far as I know, we never had a key to our front door. And of course, now we have an alarm system <laughs> yes. and lock the doors and things are just quite different. But Roswell, New Mexico is a wonderful place to live. Once you get sand in your shoes, <laughs> it, it's hard to leave. That's right. That's right. Yes. So what do you know about the, um, I'm kind of curious how Roswell has changed over the years. And so I also am interested in the history of the air base and what has kind of happened to the economy and how things have changed as the mission over there has changed throughout the years. Roswell was a thriving community when the base was here. First, it was Roswell Army Airfield. And then I think they named it after a general and decided to name it Walker. Air Force Base. And of course, the city folk called them all flyboys. And uh, I was a teenager at that time, and my mother wouldn't think of letting me go with one of those <laughs> flyboys. So, and then there was some political something, and the base closed. And we had so many vacant houses. Yeah. I mean, you, you could buy property very reasonable. Maybe I could even say cheap. Yeah, yeah. I bet. And uh, so it took quite a number of years for Roswell to come back from the base closing. Do you think that's why Roswell capitalized so strongly on the UFO scene for some of the economical could be. reasons? You know, every community needs income. Yeah. And of course, that has been a good income right. for Roswell. Right, right. 
and you seem to know many of the locals here. I'm assuming it's a small community when we went to the Curiosities Museum, the miniature museum, they knew you. When we went to the Historical Society, they knew you, so. Well, for years I was very active yeah. in the community. I am not now, but uh, I have volunteered at the museums and been in several organizations. You said you volunteered at the Roswell Museum, right? Yes, what I did, did you do there? For probably 20 years. That's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. And for a town the size of Roswell, the Roswell Museum is awesome. It really is. I was surprised at how big it was, actually. And of course, we have many other museums and it's a wonderful place to visit. And there's quite a bit, uh, nice size art community here. Yes, artists. it is. Tell me what you know about Peter Hurd. Peter Hurd. Well, he went to art school, I believe, in the East and met his wife. And they settled in the Hondo Valley at San Patricio. And his artwork has been featured everywhere, as Henrietta Wyeth was also. Yes. So, and I guess it goes down to the next generation too, so. So tell me, what's your favorite restaurant in Roswell? I would have to say Peppers. All right, Peppers, very good to know. Adam, knows my name, knows where I live, and has just always been exceptional good. He catered my 80th birthday Ooh. and has catered quite a few things for us. And of all the attractions here in Roswell, what do you think is, what would you recommend is the number one thing to see here? Oh, maybe. You gave me a list. She gave me a nice list of things to yes. see when I'm here. Uh, possibly Bottomless Lakes, Bitter Lakes. Yes. Check out the museums. Yes. Yes. It was all yeah. fantastic. 